video the five fastest ways to lower creatinine in stage 4 and 5 kidney disease patients. If you have kidney problems, you should never lose hope. There are remedies and therapies that work. Catherine from Double Kidney here. Welcome to our journey together to a better kidney health. With the goal of improving kidney health fast, today we will see the most promising innovative treatments and we will also see what science has already proven to work. And by the way guys, there's a big update about the bioartificial implantable kidney. Dr. Shuma Roy, project leader of the bioartificial kidney, in a recent interview, has disclosed a date not just for the human trials, but for the commercialization of the bioartificial kidney. More about this in today's video. Now, let's start with the five fastest way to lower creatinine. Number five, take care of anemia. Not many people know this, but taking care of anemia is one of the most effective ways to slow down kidney disease and in some cases to lower creatinine levels. Anemia is a very common condition in people with chronic kidney disease. If you have symptoms such as fatigue, cold hands and feet or headaches, it's probably anemia. Sadly, anemia will not only make you feel tired, it damages the kidneys. Anemia is a condition in which the body has fewer red blood cells than normal, but your body needs those blood cells and your kidneys too. We can basically say that if you want to beat kidney disease, you'll have to beat anemia too. What to do then? Take all the necessary steps to fight anemia. For many patients, improving the diet is enough to increase hemoglobin significantly and lower creatinine. A simple trick to do this is eating foods rich in iron such as spinach, kale, Swiss chard, big greens at the same time as a food rich in vitamin C such as kiwi, lemon, strawberry and more. Doing this regularly will provide your body with enough iron and will make it bioavailable. If this is not enough, a multivitamin can help. Many vitamins are needed by the body to make red blood cells, but vitamin C, vitamin B12, and folate are particularly useful. As usual, talk with your doctor or dietitian before making any changes to your diet. Also consider taking L-carnitine. This amino acid is often used for weight loss, but it has a ton of other benefits. In particular, in studies on CKD patients, L-carnitine has been shown to be effective as adjunctive treatment of anemia. It also has a potential for reducing blood pressure and the inflammatory process associated with kidney disease. Now, these dietary changes and supplements may help, but some patients, especially those in the advanced stages, may still need to take a medication called erythropoietin. So, very important if you have symptoms of anemia such as fatigue and paleness and you've not been diagnosed or are not being appropriately treated, talk to your doctor. This is the only way to ensure you are doing everything you can to stop anemia. And by the way guys, I haven't talked in depth about anemia in ages now, so if you think I should make a full video regarding everything you need to know to beat anemia, let me know in the comment section! And also feel free to ask any question you want. Now guys, we have seen that some vitamins can help. And talking about vitamins, there's one in particular that's proven to help slowing down CKD, even in patients in stage four. Number four, take vitamin D. A recent study found out that supplementing low dose active vitamin D could significantly reduce the severity of proteinuria among patients with CKD. Proteinuria is one of the most important indicators of kidney health. Reducing proteinuria means also improving kidney health. And maybe even more important, kidney disease patients with the higher levels of vitamin D are considerably less at risk of dying from cardiovascular disease. Cardiovascular disease is the number one cause of death in kidney disease patients. So what the study is basically telling us is that this vitamin could save your life. 
I want to be very clear on this. What the researchers are saying here is that taking a vitamin D supplement could realistically save your life if you have kidney disease or if you are on dialysis. I know that a lot of people don't like taking too many supplements. I get it. You're probably taking enough prescriptions already. Adding more pills on top of that is not always easy. But as we have seen with anemia, vitamins both from the diet and supplements are crucial for managing CKD. And if there's only one thing worth taking in almost 100% of cases, it's vitamin D. Vitamin D is so useful doctors are starting to call it the kidney vitamin. It has so many benefits. Many people take it because it can help with the immune system, but it can also lower your risk for depression, lower your blood pressure, improve kidney function as we have seen, and it can even improve insulin sensitivity in people with diabetes, according to a recent study. No other vitamin alone can boast all these incredible properties. This is why I'm fairly convinced that if you are only going to supplement one thing, you should supplement vitamin D in its active form. Commonly recommended dosages for people with kidney disease are between 600 IU and 1000 IU, depending on levels. Patients on dialysis are usually recommended to take 2000 IU per day instead. Vitamin D supplements are very safe. Still consult your doctor before starting to take it. Now guys, here's what you have been waiting for. As promised, there is a big update regarding the artificial kidney development. I've decided to include in today's video about the fastest way to lower creatinine because, well, once it will be available, it will do exactly what the human kidneys do and it will filter all the excess creatinine. And this is not just theory. And there's a big update directly from the Facebook page of the Kidney Project, the group of researchers led by Dr. Shuva Rai that are working on the artificial kidney. Now guys, for those of you that don't know about the bioartificial kidney from UCSF, we are talking about a real bioartificial organ here because it's made from both artificial parts and lab-made human kidney cells. Once ready, it will be able to do the job of the kidneys completely. The bioartificial kidney is going to be the size of a coffee cup and consists of two modules that work together and that are powered by the human body. Once implanted, the bioartificial kidney won't need any external power and it's meant to be permanent without the need for immunosuppressant drugs. By the way, these are the first images online of the final product. Cool, isn't it? It's composed by two parts, as you can see. I'll keep this simple, I don't want to bore you. However, the first part here is the hemofilter. It basically does what the dialysis machine does. It removes toxins and scores from the blood. They have already tested it on animals and proven that it works. Now, the human kidney does way more than just filtering the blood. It's involved in many essential processes such as assisting with blood pressure and hormone production. That's why there is also a second component in the bioartificial kidney, the bioreactor. The bioreactor contains a culture of human kidney cells. So that's why they call it bioartificial and it's gonna help filter a patient's blood by reabsorbing nutrients and rooting toxins and excess water, the urine to the bladder for excretion. Now, this part two was tested on animals as we can see here. What they are doing right now is working on the integration of these two components and on obtaining the FDA approval for testing the completed by artificial kidney on humans. They expect to arrive at this final stage of clinical trials by late 2021. After that, they will start to test it on humans, hopefully already in 2022. Now, the amazing news! In a recent interview, Dr. Shiva Roy, project leader of the Bioartificial Kidney, said that he is confident that the artificial kidney will be commercialized in 2025, which is amazing! 
we are talking what? Three years? And this is the first time they set a date not just for the human trials, but for the commercialization of the ultimate product. And by the way, if any of you guys are interested in participating in the human trial for the artificial kidneys that, as I said, could be starting already next year, the kidney project has a database, a sort of waiting list for people wanting to be test subjects for the artificial kidney. You can find all the info down in the description. Now, here is something you can start using right now. This is a very powerful remedy that was tested on stage 4 and 5 kidney disease patients. Number 2. Astragalus. Okay, this adaptogen was proven to be incredibly effective remedy against the progression of kidney disease. In a study published on prestigious paper, astragalus extract was able to lower creatinine levels of stage 4 and 5 kidney disease patients. In particular, after just 3 months of therapy with astragalus, creatinine levels were, on average, significantly better with astragalus. Patients in stage 4 were also able to keep these improved levels for 6 months or more. And this is amazing! Taking astragalus was also beneficial for the other most important levels for CKD such as bond, GFR, and proteinuria. Astragalus has several benefits that could explain the significant improvement in kidney function. According to several studies, this adaptogen can help lowering blood pressure and blood glucose levels, the most common causes of kidney damage. It can also help improving the immune system and protecting the kidneys from infections. Now, the interesting part about astragalus is that it's already widely used to treat several conditions thanks to these benefits. So you won't have any problems finding it right now in herbalist shops or on Amazon. It's also very cheap to do a 3 months treatment, you will have to spend around $15 to $20. The dosage used in the studies I've mentioned is 2.5 grams of extract per day. But don't forget to consult your doctor if you want to try this remedy. Number 1. The Alkaline Diet Fact. Eating alkaline may be enough to effectively lower your creatinine levels and slow down or completely stop the progression of kidney disease. This is what the study published on the Journal of Renal Nutrition found out. The author of the study have proven that a low protein diet with less animal protein and more fruit and vegetables will result in some patients showing stable renal function and a few patients even improving renal function. The author of this important paper thinks that regression of CKD may be possible for patients following an alkaline diet. Now guys, I recently made a very interesting video about the 7 habits you will need to develop to turn your diet into an alkaline one. Watch it now if you have missed it. It's up here. And a new video is coming next Tuesday. I hope to see you there. In the meantime, keep taking good care of your kidneys and be good to yourself. This is all for today. Thank you for watching.